So today, when we look at the background of the Nile monitor lizard, it is known as Africa's largest lizard, but here in the States, it's known as an invasive species in Florida. The exact time when the Nile monitor lizards arrived in Florida is unknown, but it was most likely due to a pet trade. They were also spotted in Florida for the first time in 1990, so approximately 30 years or so. And the body size of them can go up to two meters in length, and their weight can vary from 13 to 33 pounds, though some people say that it can be more, and some sources also say that it can be less. And one of the fun facts in which I discovered while looking into the background of the Nile monitor lizard was that there are three large breeding locations in Florida, and one of them contains well over 1,000 individuals. And I thought that it was pretty interesting considering they've only been invasive for approximately 30, 35 years. Some more background is the evolutionary background. Um, according to the available evidence, monitor lizards and their close relatives, which are the heloderns, which are the gila lizards, and len thonotids, um, earless monitors, probably originated in northern Asia at least 90 million years ago. And this is whenever dinosaurs were starting to come to the end and flowers actually started to um, cover the earth. Um, also today there is at least 46 species of monitor lizards that are known to exist. Um, these are only in Africa, Asia, and um, Aus Australia, Asia, Australasia. Um, monitor lizards, also their tax economy is um, lively, but it is controversial. And this is because the um, external morphological characteristics um, can easily be misleading because they greatly vary in color, pattern, um, scalation, shape, and size. Um, even amongst the groups of siblings, which I thought was fairly fascinating that even looking at, you know, two of the same, like, family, that they don't really look exactly the same. But, yeah. The Nile monitor lizard breeds once annually. The breeding season typically begins in June and ends in October. Females will often go into heat in the middle of the dry season. The way they alert potential mates is by staking out on large trees and they'll try not to move about too much as they give off a pheromone chemical, which is like giving off a scent to lure in male suitors. This chemical can be detected by male monitors up to a mile away. The female monitor will lay between 20 and 60 eggs, which are released from the cloacal opening, located just below the hind limbs. When the rainy season comes, some species of monitors will dig holes in the sides of termite mounds to lay their eggs. In doing so, the lizard does not have to exert as much energy in covering the hole. The termites will quickly repair the gaping hole, which protects the eggs during development. The eggs may take up to one year to hatch. Oftentimes, the nest is too rough to climb out of, so when the rain comes and softens the hard nest, the hatchlings are able to break free. On rare occasions, it has been reported that a mother monitor will return to assist in digging out the hatchlings. Upon hatching, the small young weighs around 26 grams. Hey everybody, my name is Makora Ame and I'll be going over the structure and functions of the Nile monitor lizard. Now, before I begin, I like to say that, like to say that you don't want this reptile in your backyard for a good reason. 
They're extremely dangerous and they're known for their very nasty temperament. And the lizard's whole body has a variety of weapons for different functions. Its first weapon is its muscular body. Nile monitors are made out of muscle and they're extremely strong. And Nile monitors also have their long whip tail here. They use it for balance when they're running and they use it for swimming, which makes them excellent swimmers. They swim swishing their tail back and forth and they also use it in self-defense. They strike their enemies like a whip with their long tail and trust me, you really don't want to get hit by this tail. I never got hit by that tail and I don't want to know how it feels like. And they also have strong robust limbs that gives them a good posture when they're walking and they also use their limbs for climbing. They're good climbers and they have extremely powerful jaws. Jaws that are so strong that they can crush bone. And yes, if you get you don't want to get bit by one of these because they could take your finger your finger off. And and also their jaws are also used to have a good grip on their prey. Like you can see in this picture here, this Nile monitor's got a good grip on this smaller Nile monitor's neck. And and also their teeth. When Nile monitors are young, they have razor sharp teeth. But when they become older into adults, their teeth becomes more blunt because Nile monitors have adapted to have a wide variation of prey items that they like to eat. They like to eat small mammals, small reptiles. They like to eat fish, birds. They even eat shellfish. They have, that's what their teeth is designed to crush the shells of shellfish. And, and also they will eat anything that is smaller than them. So, and in Florida, they've been known to attack and devour people's pet cats and do small dogs. And they also have their forked tongue. That's like a snakes that they use to taste chemicals in the air to help them locate prey, cape prey. And another thing they have is they have these razor sharp claws that are as sharp as a birds of prey's talons that they use to help them climb and also they use them to tear their prey to shreds especially prey is too a little too large for them to actually swallow whole they just use their claws to just rip it to shreds and also they also use their claws in self-defense if you, if you try to pick up one of these guys, expect to get badly scratched up. <laughs> and also, um, now monitors, like other monitor lizards, they also possess some venom glands. Which means, but um, the good news is that they're not as functionally formed like in other venomous snakes, like the rattlesnakes. But still, um, in their saliva, they have so much bacteria in their mouth because of all the dead Karen that they eat. Karen is um, dead, pretty much dead animals and it's full, full, full of tons of bacteria and if you, if you get bit by one of these lizards and if you don't treat it that you could, you could die. Okay, so, so, uh, if you ever think about getting a, a reptilian pet, you know, make sure make sure that it's not on Nile monitor or any other kind of monitor unless you totally have experience with these guys.